Welcome along. This is the ExtraTime.com League of Ireland Voice Notes podcast. I'm Oshin Langan. What a bank holiday Monday it was. St. Patrick's Athletic beating Derry City by four goals to one. Are they title contenders? We'll talk to Gareth McGlynn, formerly of Derry City and Bohemians, about that shortly. He was at the game, as was I. Dundalk went 1-0 down to UCD, but 1-4-1. We'll be hearing from John Flanagan on that, Shelburne overcoming Drogheda United by three goals to two at Talca Park. Alan Keane watched Shamrock Rovers beat Sligo Rovers by three goals to nil, while Cork City overcame Bohemians by two goals to one. Healy and Kresic with the goals. McDonnell with the equaliser for Bowes, but within seconds or certainly minutes of that equaliser, Daniel Kresic got the winner for Cork City, who have now won four games in a row. We'll be doing a deeper dive on Cork City in, well, Friday slash Saturday's ExtraTime.com League of Ireland Voice Notes podcast because we're heading to Turner's Cross for the clash of Cork City and Dundalk. We'll run through all the results and the table ramifications shortly. But first, let's analyse a pretty amazing game at Richmond Park. Not amazing from a Derry City point of view. It was just disappointing from a Candy Stripes point of view. But goals from Jay McGrath, Owen Doyle, Chris Forrester and Mark Doyle gave the Saints a 4-1 victory. That's Jay McGrath's first ever professional goal, by the way. Not just for St. Pat's. He was tweeting about it uh, last night and his joy. There's a good interview with him, actually, on the St. Pat's social media channels. Keen Kavanagh with the only goal for Derry, who just looked off it. And they lost Michael Duffy and Patrick McElhenney through injury as well which didn't help. Here's the reaction of Derry City boss, Rory Higgins. Without a shadow of a doubt, the most gut-wrenching uh, night since I've taken over anyway, that's for sure. Um, up until 1-0, there wasn't much in the game, we were fine. Uh, but from that moment on, we lost our composure, we lost our discipline, and uh, it's unacceptable. And, and over the last couple of years, we've had a good defensive record, but um, we look fragile tonight, very, very fragile. And... Uh, uh, we need to eradicate all those errors and, and make sure that we become harder to beat um, than what we were tonight because uh, uh, it's, it's, it's well, well, well below par and, and unacceptable. The game went 2-1 and, and there was maybe a wee bit of anxiety amongst them and, and we literally conceded within minutes again and, and it killed off any chances of, of, of scrap, scrapping back into the game. But... Um, Really, really poor goals from our end. Really poor. Uh, every single goal was preventable, and, and that's the most uh, gut wrenching thing. Um, this is a, an extremely difficult moment. It's a it's a difficult night, um, and uh, you either lie under it, and, or you come out fighting. And, and um, I hope that it's the latter. You might have. Uh a wounded animal and bows on Friday night they lost down in court today I mean how do you think that match is going to go well I hope it's two wounded animals playing against each other uh, it's um, we, we need to we need to we need to attack the game we need to be brave we need to be a lot better um, more committed than what we were here tonight and uh, it's a performance that's that's not um what we want here it's it's a it's a it's, it was a soft center performance and um, we need to make sure as i said we need to make sure that uh, we eradicate the errors and 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 uh, and make sure that it doesn't happen again Derry city boss rory higgins speaking to michael keely of drive 105 amongst others i actually commentated on the game for drive 105 i was a late call up a late replacement and uh, in fairness to eva my partner we were all set to go to oriel park and she said well you know what let's go we didn't expect what happened? I'm not sure anyone did. What about Gareth McGlynn, formerly of Bowes and Derry City? He was there for BBC Radio. I spoke to him after the game and the first thing I did ask him was, did you expect what happened? Did you see this coming? And by the way, just in case you're a paranoid St. Pat's fan, this conversation is not just about Derry being bad. It's about St. Pat's being good and whether or not they could be title contenders. You know what, Oshin? I did see an entertaining good game. I think I predicted 3-2 three, three, to Derry City. So I did predict five goals, but not in that order. Um, there's no doubt about it. St. Patrick's thoroughly deserved this. Bar the first 15 minutes. And I said it on commentary. I said, Rory Higgins would have liked 
the first 15 minutes. Derry City were combative, they were first to everything, they were winning second balls. But from that moment onwards, St. Pat's dominated. And I don't know what it was, whether it was the injuries or what it was, but the, as the game moved on, St. Pat's got better and Derry City got worse. And then to, to, to compound everything, we've got Michael Duffy going off with an ankle injury and hopefully Patrick McElhinney with a not a serious injury. But he's gone off with the jersey over his, over his head. It looks as if he's very upset and it looks like it could be that Achilles. St. Pat's went after them tonight, didn't they? They did, and and to be honest with you, they didn't start well. St. Pat's did not start well. Derry started the better team, but De- De- St. Pat's did with, to Derry what Derry did to St. Pat's in the first 15 minutes. They went after him. You saw them with the, 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 the Mark Doyle goal. Literally, every time St. Pat's won the ball, they broke in, in waves. And I can understand now, under John Daly, why they've scored so many goals. They are they're comfortable. They're, they're, they're comfortable in possession. The back four were very impressive tonight. Um, the, the, Lewis was good, and, and I love Curtis. Curtis is some player. I mean, to me, it's only a matter of time before he moves on to, to bigger and better things. But at the back, they were very... And then McGrath with his first goal. They look very comfortable because they needed to be good. Because if you play the way St. Pat's play going forward, defensively, you need to be strong. I think there are times where you can look at the goals conceded in a game or scored in a game, and it doesn't tell the whole story of the game. I think they do tonight. Let's start with that first one. Derry City dropped off. Jay McGrath came forward. At the time... St. Pat's were actually second best in the game but Jay McGrath had all the time in the world to have a shot from just outside the box because at that stage only the defenders were actually getting room and the ball I think it skipped in front of Mar, who was diving he got his hand to it but he couldn't keep it out yeah and what happened Oshin is Pat's matched Derry City so Derry City they, they literally went player for player and all around the pitch so the only people as you say were on the ball was the two centre halves but what happened is the two stri- strikers for Derry or the forward players just, just separated for literally a split second he found the gap and again we, we all know what he could do with that left foot but I have to make a point to Brian Marr generally doesn't get beaten from that area yeah. but I was watching him he, he, he actually lost his footing and he's got a hand to it, but the hand hasn't been strong enough. The, the, the shot was struck too well, and he's, he's deflected it up into the top corner. And then the second goal in the second half, Jay McGrath plays one down the wing. Owen Doyle ran onto it and actually had an awful lot of time. It seemed to happen in slow motion that he took it off the wing, got inside, and from just outside the six-yard box on the left, finished it across the face of goal, 2-0 St. Pat. Oshin, if John Daly had watched the match on Friday night against Shelburne, which I'm sure he has done, I would have been telling him, to tell the St. Patrick's player, especially the two fullbacks in the centre halves, to put the ball over uh, uh, um, uh, Conley's head, Mark Conley, because he was struggling on Friday night with that. He has been out injured for quite a while. He's come in here tonight. He's played his second 90 minutes in four days. It's a massive, massive ask. But again, that ball went over his head. Owen Doyle came on it. As you say, he had all the time in the world. I actually thought he took too much, too, too many touches, but he's actually prodded into the corner with his final touch. Great finish. Then 2-1, the ball kind of rebounded around the box and uh, to be fair to Kavanagh, he, he pounced and at that stage you thought Derry were getting back into it but within minutes, Pats broke, got a corner and Forrester came out to meet it on the near side and kind of re-diverted it into the other side of the goal. A really soft one to concede for Derry. That, that five minutes summed up the game. Derry said he got themselves back into the game and at 2-1 they had made all their substitutions so there was energy there. There was only O'Reilly and McEnough came on and then Brandon Kavanagh came on so it was creativity as well but that Forrester goal to me was the pivotal goal. The two goals was the Forrester goal and the first goal. Again the first goal was against the run of, player and, run of play and the Forrester goal really was a nail in the coffin to get the three points to St. Patrick tonight. Yeah, and then the fourth goal I'm just trying to remember how it happened now. Yes, uh, Adam O'Reilly, formerly of St. Pat's, came on, dispossessed in midfield. Mark Doyle just ran through. And again, unfortunately for Mark, he got something on it. Connolly thought he might be able to get back and hook it off the line, but he couldn't. The ball beat him in the race. 4-1, and that's all she wrote. Yeah, absolutely. Jason McLean with a great ball in the Mark, Mark Doyle. And listen, he's, he's one-on-one with, with, with Mark. He just had to pick a spot. Mark got a hand there, but couldn't keep it out. But I have to say, I have to give credit to, to, to St. Pat's. And it looks like at 4-1, you give credit to the attacking players. But for me, it was a defence of play from St. Pat's and the back four they were excellent Are St. Pat's and I'm getting ahead of myself here possibly outside title contenders from what you can see from tonight and, and to be honest with you Oshin, I watched the first game 1-1 won, 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 and to me St. Pat's were very good that night as well and probably should have won the game so, so coming here they've stepped it up again I don't know what John Daly has done but definitely going forward they are much more of a threat and as we saw, we, we talk about today defensively strong are they an outside threat 
I, th I think you've got to give them a chance. I still think a squad will play a big part in it. And I think Shamrock Rovers and Derry City have the strongest squad. Now, in saying that, Derry City have lost two of their best players tonight again. How long they are about will dictate if Derry City are still in this title race. How much are they missing Colin Whelan? Or just an out-and-out -out striker, an out-and-out -out -po poacher? Absolutely. Keane Kavanagh did really well tonight. But again, Rory Higgins is changing from Jamie to Keane Kavanagh. He just, he, he's not 100% happy with either. Listen, Colin Whelan, there's nothing we can do. He's going for another, another scan. Hopefully it's not that bad. But it looks like he's going to be out for the rest of the season. Listen, it, it's, it's up to Rory Higgins now to work his magic in the transfer window. And you said it there, I think. But just to reconfirm, Shamrock Rovers very much your favourites for the title. Absolutely, and always, always have been all year. I mean, how close Derry City pushed them last year was a credit to Rory Higgins and the team. This year was they, they, they were going to. It's all about getting closer to them. And again, it's going to be an uphill build it, battle. But big game on Friday night against Bowes. If they can go and win against Bowes now on Friday night before the break, you do not want to be going under the break having them picked up one point in twelve. That's not good enough. Do you make mass changes for that game? Do you say to the guys who started, well, you started well, I'm going to give you another chance? Well, obviously, he has to make changes, I think, because Duffy and McElhinney look like they might miss the game through injury, but you know what I mean, yeah. the ones who are available from tonight. What do you do if you're Rory Higgins? You pick your best team. You, you pick your best team because... Does he know his best team? That is a good question. We'll find out on Friday night because to me, he's got to pick it. You've got two, two weeks rest after that, so you've got to pick your best team and you've got to go out there and try and get three points because, to believe it or not, and I know it's early in the season, a point at home to Bowes now it's not enough you've got to keep the momentum Shamrock Rovers are, are, are playing UCD on Friday night they're going to pick up three points we've got to do the same OK Gareth McGinn formerly of Bohemians and Derry City you were in action for BBC Radio Foil tonight in a sunny inch of core where St Pat's beat Derry City by four goals to one Gareth McGlynn thanks for joining us on the Extra Time uh, League of Ireland Voice Notes podcast Thank you Cheers Ryan Funnily enough, I wasn't even supposed to be at a game yesterday. I wasn't even going to do a podcast. But I got a call from Drive 105 who needed a late sub and I was happy to do it a beautiful evening in Richmond Park. Well, not for Derry City, but it certainly was for St. Pat's. Over 4,000 people in to watch them beat Derry City by four goals to one. That meant that if Shamrock Rovers won, they would go four points clear of Derry at the top. Could they? Well, you all know at this stage that they did. A couple of goals from Rory Gaffney, a one from Aaron Green sealing the deal. A former Sligo Rovers and Dundalk player Alan Keane was at that game for LOI TV. And afterwards, he sent us this voice note. First half hadn't a lot in it. Luke McNicholas was the was the busier of the of the two keepers. He pulled off uh, two good saves from Johnny Kinney, who was back on this in the starting line tonight, starting lineup tonight. Uh, the first opportunity came after a great play uh, down the left hand side. Uh, by Gaffney, who who um, played in Ferruja, and Ferruja had just got got in and uh, got into the penalty area, and ball fell to Johnny Kinney, who struck it on his left foot, and a great save by Luke McNicholas. Then a couple of minutes later, the same two combined again, where Ferruja won the ball on the left, he dinked a little ball across the six-yard box, but Johnny Kinney got a great header to put it across the keeper, but Luke McNicholas was quick on his feet, pulled off a great save. Uh, apart from that, not a lot more ha not a lot much more happened in in that half. Sligo Rovers didn't really have threatened Shamrock Rovers at all. And then the second half probably started how it finished the half. Shamrock Rovers having a lot of possession, and it was three minutes, three minutes I suppose where the damage was done. Um, in the fifty third and fifty sixth minute, fifty third minute, uh, Rory Gaffney got his his first goal of the game. It was great play, excellent play by Jack Byrne, who won the ball on the edge of the Sligo Rovers 18-yard uh, box. He had four or five, six lads around him. He he kept jinking with the ball. He I don't know how he got out of it. He got away, kept it really, really well, passed it to Lee Grace, who came in off the line, slipped the ball down the side after a great run, run by Johnny Kinney. Johnny Kinney composed himself when he got in the box and checked back onto his favourite right side and played a delightful ball across the six-yard box. And there was Rory Gaffney for the easiest tap in for his first of the night. And then three minutes later, uh, that lad again, Jack Byrne, what a fantastic ball over uh, Sligo Rovers left back Hutchinson. Rory Gaffney didn't have to break stride. He nodded the ball across Hutchinson. It was a great, great header because he came across Hutchinson, so it didn't allow Hutchinson to get back and make a tackle. Luke McNicholas was came off his line, but Gaffney with a delicate finish, a little dink into the into the net, and that all but sealed the night, uh, the win for. Shamrock Rovers. They, they had the pleasure of being able to bring on the likes of Sean Hoare, Graham Burke, Aaron Green, 
Um, so that just shows the strength and depth that they have. And it was the two uh, substitutes that combined on the 88th minute for the, the, the third goal of the game, uh, which put the icing on the cake for them. It was Burke got the ball on the edge of the box. He slipped a great ball into Green, who ran onto it and fired it to the back of the net, giving Luke McNicholas no chance. Um, it's worrying times for Sligo Rovers, who had a lot out injured and uh, sickness tonight. So John Russell will be, I suppose, be looking forward to the, the break coming up. They face a tough task now t- next week when they take on Shelburne. And also with Cork City winning, it's pulling them closer into the the bottom zone, which he, he won't want. But um, a lot of injuries to key players doesn't help. Uh, but overall, I suppose he can't have too many complaints tonight as Shamrock Rovers were by far the better team and fully deserved of the three points. This is the ExtraTime.com League of Ireland Voice Notes podcast and that was former Sligo Rovers player Alan Keane who was at the showgrounds to watch Sligo get beaten 3-0 by Shamrock Rovers. Right, let's go to Oriel Park. Dundalk needed a win. Did they get one? Well, again, at this stage, you know they did. They beat UCD by four goals to one. Watching that one for us was Dundalk, former Dundalk player John Flanagan and after the game, he sent us this voice note. Game that will be long remembered for the fact that Pat Hooban on scoring a hat-trick finally equaled Joey Donnelly's long-standing club record of 142 goals but it didn't look like it was going to be like that in the first half in a game that was lacking a lot of quality in the first half small attendance dry pitch bit of indecision from both sides and poor quality it was UCD who drew first blood lack of communication between Andy Boyle and Nathan Shepherd resulted in Doyle nipping in between both of them and securing the goal for UCD. But Dundalk finally equalised with a ball into the box from Archie Davis, resulted in Uli Koki being fouled, and upstep Pat Hooban to, to bury the penalty to the keeper's left-hand side. Second goal just before half-time for Dundalk, from Dan Kelly. I think Andy Boy- or Andy Moyle will be very disappointed at how he conceded that goal. His whole defence was static as Pat Hooban headed the ball back into the penalty area. They all looked at it and Dan Kelly on his toes nipped in between the three three defenders and, and stuck the ball by the keeper. The dog came out in the second half and was slightly better. They moved the ball a bit quicker, held on to possession a bit longer and, and finally moved that UCD defence around. And the third goal came from a fantastic move, long diagonal ball from Ansley into Dan Kelly who pulled the ball back for Archie Davis who whipped in a wonderful ball and Pat Hooban met it full on the run and powered a header in past the keeper. His hatcher came, it's a similar enough route, good ball in from Darrell Lee. Pat Hooban on the back post heading across to secure his hat trick and as I mentioned already, the club record of 142 goals. So three points for Dundalk, badly needed to try and keep themselves on the coattails of Bohemians and Pats for those European spots. Former Dundalk player John Flanagan, who was there for LMFM and uh, LOI TV, but he was kind enough to send us a voice note for the Extra Time dot com League of Ireland Voice Notes podcast. Right, let's round up uh, the results from well last night as you listened. Dundalk four, UCD one, Cork City two, Bohemians one, Sligo Rovers nil, Shamrock Rovers three, St Patrick's Athletic four, Derry City one, and Shelburne FC three, Drogheda United two. I was so late in organising the podcast, I didn't actually have anyone at Turner's Cross or Talca Park. But as per usual, if you go to the club's own social media channels and indeed the League of Ireland social media channels, you'll find lots of good reactions. St. Pat's have some really good stuff up with John Daly and um, goal scorer from yesterday, Jay McGrath, his first ever professional goal. In the first division, Kerry FC nil, Waterford FC six, Cove Ramblers one, Longford Town nil. Galway United 6, Finn Harps 0, Treaty United 1, Wexford FC 1, Levingston with an absolute smasher of a goal in that game. It's well worth checking out if you have the time. At Lone Town 3, Bray Wanderers 1, a final score. Let's check out the tables. Shamrock Rovers on top on 39 points. Derry City 2nd on 35 points. St. Pat's 3rd on 35 points. Are they title contenders? They're just 4 points behind Shamrock Rovers. Gareth McGlynn is impressed with them. He told us that earlier on. Can they keep up this run of form? It'd be some feat if they could. Bohemians in fourth on 33 points. They, of course, are taking on Derry on Friday night before the break. Shelburne fifth on 29 points. Dundalk sixth on 29 points. They were two losses in a row going into their game against UCD and they picked up a much needed victory. Sligo Rovers 
Well, they're now four losses from their last five. They're on 22 points in seventh position. Cork City, four victories in a row. They're on 21 points. They're in eighth position. That's one point ahead of Drogheda United, who lost yesterday. Two losses over the weekend for them. Unlucky in both games, it seems to be the case. For Cork City, if you offered Cork City fans eighth position before the season started... I think they would very much take it. They just want to stay in the Premier Division. That is the aim for this season. UCD bottom on six points. Let's take a look at the first division. Ronan Cochran, by the way, with another four goal uh, salvo for Waterford yesterday against Kerry FC. He's probably too good to be in the first division, but that's where he is. And uh, if he keeps up this form, no doubt he'll fire Waterford to the Premier Division for next season. Anyway, Galway on top on 49 points. Waterford second on 39. Athlone third on 26. Cove Ramblers fourth on 26. Bray Wanderers fifth on 25. Wexford sixth on 22. Treaty seventh on 20. Longford eighth on 18. Uh, Finharps second from bottom on 18. And Kerry FC bottom on six points. What's coming up at the weekend? Well, on Friday, it is a very, very busy night in the Premier Division. Drogheda United welcome St. Patrick's Athletic. Derry City up against Bohemians. Cork City welcome Dundalk. We'll be at that game. So that will form a big part of Saturday's podcast. Shelburne hosting Sligo Rovers and Shamrock Rovers are up against UCD in the first division next weekend. Waterford welcome Bray. Kerry take on Athlone. Wexford face Galway. Treaty United meet Cove and Longford take on Finn Harps. By the way, by the time this podcast comes out, you may have found out two things that we don't know at the moment. One, who'll play who? in the first round of the Sports Direct FAI Cup because the draw is being made on Tuesday. And two, who is the League of Ireland player who is joining Love Island? Daniel MacDonald had the story today in the Irish Independent. It's a nice synergy for Virgin Media when you think about it. Last night when I watched back the goals from the St. Pat's game, there was a little Love Island logo in the corner reminding you that it's coming back. I've never watched it, but it is a nice synergy for Virgin Media who have the League of Ireland and Love Island. Right, that's it for myself, Oshin Langan. As always, you can contact us uh, via Twitter at Extra Time News or you can get me on at Oshin Langan. Match reports from all of last night's games available on extratime.com. Plus, there'll be more on the FAI Cup draw when it's made a little bit later on. That's it for me. Enjoy the rest of your week. I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.